Okay, so to start chapter 9, we're going to start talking about sequences and series. We're going to start our sequences and series chapter with mathematical patterns. So for a quick warm-up, we're going to see how this particular pattern works. So, looking at all the boxes, we see that going up is, on this one, we're going from 12, or sorry, we're going from 4 to 12, which is plus 8, from 12 to 24, which is plus 12, from 24 to 40, which is plus 16. So for each, each successive figure, we're increasing what we're adding by 4. And that's just a basic pattern um, that's going on right here. So for the next one, we would be adding 20. And then for the one after that, we would plus 20. We would be adding 24. So adding 20 to 40 gives us 60 for figure 5. And then for same figure 6, we would have 84. And we can continue this on all the way from figure 10 or figure 10, but let's move on. So in this section, we're going to talk about all ways to identify mathematical patterns found in the sequence, and we're going to use a formula to find the nth term of the sequence. What does this mean? The nth term? The nth term is whatever term we are looking for. It doesn't matter. It means you can find any term you want. Okay? Sometimes we can state a rule to describe a pattern. Other times we have to do a little bit of work. And that's two specific types of formulas that we'll talk about. And our essential understanding what you should know by the end of this lesson is that if the numbers in the list follow a pattern, you may be able to reach each number to a list to a position in the list with a rule. What rule are we going to talk about? Well, first we need to define what a sequence is. A sequence is any ordered list of numbers. Each thing in a sequence is called a term. And we represent these terms using subscripts. For example, Notice how a sub 5, the 5 is a subscript, it's lower, it's not an exponent, it's nothing. It's the fifth term in the sequence. The sequence continues 1, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub, a sub 4, and so on. Notice each one of the numbers is a subscript, it's in the bottom. It tells us the position of the number in the sequence. Okay. We always usually start a sequence starting with one, because that's how we count. We count one, two, three, four, five. That's how we start a sequence. So my first term would be a sub one, a sub two, a sub three. As we get up to the nth term, any term we want, all we're saying right here with these two subscripts is that this is the term before n. This is the term after n. And that's all it means with n minus 1 and n plus 1. It's not exponents. It's nothing to do with variables, right? It's position inside of a list. One step forward, one step back. Okay. An explicit formula. An explicit formula describes the nth term using the number n. So basically what an explicit formula is, is a formula to get any number of n that we want at any time. So for this example right here, with the table on the right, our explicit formula is written right here. I'll write it over. a sub n equals 2n. That means any term that we want, we can find using this formula. On the table, we find the first, second, third, and fourth term by plugging in 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the formula and getting my sequence. Okay. Say I wanted to find the hundredth term. Very easy using an explicit formula. A sub 100, all I would have to do is plug 100 in for n. This tells me the term of the sequence, so the hundredth term of the sequence is 200. Using an explicit formula. Okay. Next, let's use an explicit formula to generate a sequence. So we're going to start with my first term. Well, it's going to be 3. I plug in the term I'm looking for right there, 3 times 1, minus 2. 
3 times 1 minus 2 is 1. To find the next term, instead of the 1, I plug in the 2. Minus 2. That's going to give me 4. On my worksheet. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. We go back to a sub 3. To find that, it's 3 times 3 minus 2 which gives me 7. So now you should be able to see the pattern. It seems to be going up by 3 each time. So we can continue plugging in 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or we can just build our sequence 7, 10, 15, 16, 19, 22, and 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, one more. So that is our first 10 terms of this sequence. The next kind of formula that we can have is something called a recursive formula. A recursive formula or a recursive definition has two parts. An initial condition. Every recursive formula needs to start somewhere. For instance, this sequence starts at the first term is 133. The difference between an explicit formula and a recursive formula is that on a recursive formula, we do not know the, we, don't, we can't solve for any term that we want. We can only solve for the next term. So a recursive formula has something that looks like this in every one. Something that says a to the n minus 1. A sub n minus 1. That means the term before n, and then what do I do to it? I take the term before n, and I subtract 3. Okay? That will give me the n term. So the way I do this, then, is I start with the first term, 133. Oh, actually, let me go like this. To get the second term, we take the first term minus 3. So to get the second term, I take 133 minus 3, which is 130, which we see right here is the second term. To get the next term, I take that term, the second term, and subtract 3. To get the next term, I take the one before it and subtract 3. That's how a recursive formula works. Every term comes from the term before it. One of the most famous recursive formulas is something called the Fibonacci sequence. Would you do? You got it right. I don't know if you got it right. Pay attention to this. The most, one of the most famous recursive formulas looks like this. A sub 1 equals 1. A sub 2 equals 1. The recursive formula says that A sub n equals A sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. So what does that mean? That means to get the third term, I would have to take the second term plus the first term. To get the fourth term, I would have to take the third term plus the second term. So for the Fibonacci sequence to work, you take the two terms before it and add them together. So let's build it. We start with 1 and 1. Add them together, we get 2. Now, you add the two previous terms. So we're going to add 2 plus 1 to give me 3. Now we have the next two previous terms. 3 plus 2 gives me 5. And so on. 7, 13. 13 and 7 is 21. 34. 5 and 3 is 7? No. Hey, you're right. Sorry. 8 plus 5 is 13 because I actually know the sequence pretty well. So I knew what we were going to 13. Right? And so on and so on and so on. You keep adding them together. Well, what will we get next? What's the next term of the sequence? 21 and 34 to get wrong. Right? And it keeps going and going and going. But the Fibonacci sequence is a recursive sequence, a recursive formula. We were adding the two previous terms together to get the next one. I can't ask you, 
what is the 100 term of the Fibonacci sequence because we don't have an explicit formula for it. All we have is a recursive. All you can do is find the sequence based on the terms before that. And that's how a recursive formula works. Okay. So, let's make a recursive yeah. Let's make a recursive sequence for this. So this is term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So how many blocks are in each thing? 1, 3, 6, uh, 10, 15, and 21. So to make a recursive formula, we have to see how we're getting from one term to the next. Well, from here, we're adding two. Then three, then four, then five, then six. Now the trick is to make a formula for it. So, A sub n, in order to get the next term, I take the term before it. Every recursive formula will have something that looks like this. A to the n minus one. I erase two bytes. Okay. Plus, well, what are we adding each time? Well, it's going up each time, just as the number of term, the number, the number term we're going is going up by one each time. So my recursive formula will just be adding n. So we talked about two things this last. Explicit formulas. Oh, sorry, explicit formulas where we can find any number we want using the formula and recursive formula where you can only find the next term.